Welcome everyone to the podcast. We do have a special guest, which is Isai Sotero. And he has a very interesting background. I wanted to get open with you in regards to like, if you recall LAUSD, if you remember middle school. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Your experience there, man? Uh, this USD, well, basic, basic high school, it's super dull. And common Los Angeles theme of like, get all these teachers and <laughs> supposedly uh -huh. the rumors of a, uh, what did I say? Teachers touching kids and shit, you know, like Mr. Stover. <laughs> <laughs> just throw his name in there. Because I was going to say, just give them a why. Oh, but... shit. Nah, you good, you good. No, whoa, 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 edit that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> he came out of the news, so his name is already kind of out Sh there. Shout out to Stovey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what's the craziest? I remember with uh, Eli, we had a uh, middle school teacher, it was Miss Granis. Do you remember? Or say, also Granny. Nah. And basically, she was a wrestler. And then she got caught up in another thing was just her calling kids during physical education, basically PE, that they were overweight and fat. And she oh. got caught up in that. It was on Facebook. This one, Facebook was getting big. And then the, the parents found out and basically said, oh, you know what? She needs to get fired. So that's so cancer culture was around before it was actually happening. But that's that's what I recall with middle school. Do you have any crazy stories from Speaking that? Speaking of that, uh -huh. would you remind me, um, there's um, this one time I had a, another elementary school. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, or I should mention, I had an English teacher, we both shared one. Mm -hmm. That guy was pretty hefty, and he re he came late to class, and the teacher straight up was like, you're late to class, like, you shouldn't be doing that. It's like, maybe if you ran faster here, you would lose a little more weight. Damn. Straight to his face. I was like, damn, dude. And then, for some reason, time went past by, and then um, he left the class for some odd reason, and then everyone got like, let's get him back. So they threw all his books outside, <laughs> you got a meanest lecture from, from him. That was pretty funny. Oh man, so you know you're talking about that story right now? I've actually checked out the Al Serino thing right now. And uh, he's still there. It's looking like it. But you know what I think too, man? If you really look at it, it's like... <sighs> sometimes it's a sense of humor, you know? And so you don't know if someone's joking around or they're actually meaning it. And I think in this era, everyone's more sensitive. And so it's easier for people to take something and make it very sexual. Like even in, let's say Pop here's an example, like ESPN, right? I don't know if you remember LeVar Ball. Yeah, like a, a son. So basically, he had a situation where he was talking to the whole, one of the moderators there. Her name was Molly Kurum, I believe. And then he said, I, uh, she said, let's switch gears. And then he says, I'll switch your gears. But she took it the wrong way. He just always says in a confident way. So she took that sexual thing and then he got banned from being on ESPN. Damn. So it's one of those things, bro, in like culture, like maybe for certain teacher scenarios, maybe they're not really at fault, just people, the way they receive it. Or maybe their mind, you know, who, who knows what, but was in the gutter already. Yeah. But I was going to say, man, do you have any crazy stories from like, uh, well, let me say this, because we did both come from the LAUSD system. The bullying was insane in uh, middle school. Middle school, yeah, it's funny because of the right. I, th I think about it now is when they had uh, the whole upper field. <laughs> yeah, I remember versus that. that uh, versus like the torture field. Only, yeah, the only only the sixth graders, I guess, because they yeah. were getting. I, I'm assuming mm -hmm. they did it because they were trying to help the the sixth graders be accustomed to yeah the middle school environment versus just getting thrown in there and being. <laughs> Upper field, uh, in middle school, we had the upper field oh. basically like a. Let me see, yeah, yeah go for it. You explain it. Let me see if I can find the upper, upper field. field was basically the, the track of uh, in the middle school, and they would have you would have to show your little ID card so you can be like, Oh, I'm a sixth grader, I can come up here. So, right now, I'm trying to pull it up. Hopefully, they have it's it, man. Here. Yeah, the best image I could say. And then man, you grow too old and you kick you <laughs> Pretty much. It's like it's like the Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I also had uh, well, this is actually from yeah. my sister, where one of the teacher teachers was actually caught drinking from. Oh dang! In, in actual, what she was doing lecture and stuff. That every time in a while, once in a while, they would see that the teacher would go in her desk and just pour herself, you know, a little a couple, two, three shots or something. That's what yeah. the heck? And then uh, she would get, you know, not not too wasted, but she'd be like, yeah. you know, you can just smell it over consuming alcohol around children. They're like, what is this? If she's gonna do that, you gotta share. Yeah. Be more comfortable. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> just to settle them down, <laughs> probably. <laughs> You know, maybe it could be an experiment for a science class, yeah. but it, it's uh, it's crazy because I thought how you were mentioning the upper field of track field was separating the sixth graders. I recall one story my first year as a sixth grader that someone brought a paintball gun and it was the it was the first week and basically everyone's running out. I don't know if you remember, it's like a stampede. Every time the bell rang and kids were done, everyone would run out. So as people were running out, this guy basically sniped this young girl down with the paintball and she just fell. And I remember stopping and I was just like, oh, I'm not going that direction. And so I went back to class. And then all I remember is like the following day, they're like, whoever, well, they pretty much they didn't name drop the person. But they're like, we did have a student with the paintball gun and that person is now expelled. So anyone that's thinking about making that decision again, just think about it twice. And I was just like, that's how crazy the culture was with punking on the new people coming in. Well, this is like off topic, but same yeah. topic uh -huh. that I just remembered. It's just now that I think about like the whole ELSD system, it was pretty easy for like really crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Remember, like we had a couple like actual like close calls, like with that that dumbass kid that shot himself. <sighs> and we had that lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the well, from what I remember, it was a, there was a student at uh, our state high school mm -hmm. who was trying to get over a fence. And I guess he had the safety off, and when he reached over, climbed over, he accidentally shot himself. That's crazy. Because he was trying to ditch class or something, you know, dumbass little kids, <laughs> but younger and dumb. You know, it's crazy. He, like some of the students didn't even have mercy. They were saying he cried like a little girl. So that rumor spread when yeah, he shot himself. Dude. I'm like, there is no, then, no honor in it. Yeah, and then he tried playing it off too because um, the the, <laughs> the <laughs> thing is on like the, the school is on a hill. And then uh, the bullet wound, he's probably like standing here, the bullet wound goes down. He said supposedly someone shot him. <laughs> <laughs> so it just didn't make any sense. And then the other crazy part that I remember too, if you remember, uh -huh. the kid that got stabbed in the neck. Oh, bro, I remember that. That was uh, right by the college corner. It was in mm -hmm. Wilson Heights. Yeah, I remember that. He was laid out, right? It was from, uh, it was actually a different school kid came to, <laughs> different high school kid came from there. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Was, now that I remember, it's, is there more story behind that one? Because I heard that he did get stabbed in the neck. It was, I think it was like some, probably Lover's Pro or like some sh bullshit or something. I don't that know. That is. But, yeah, dude. It's crazy. You know, there were, when I hear about LAUSD middle school and high school, gay members were just flooding in that system, bro. Yeah, and dude. it's crazy how they didn't. This is, okay, I remember this experience. Maybe you might have something similar. But the people that were supposed to be security guards were usually the homies of the gang yeah. members. And that was the worst part is like, are you really protecting us or you're with them? Mm -hmm. And I remember this one time, this was in middle school. Uh, one of the gang members lit a trash can on fire. And then the security guard tried to chase after him. But then the guy's buddy ran right behind him and punched him in the back of the head. And I remember all the students just started rushing and running out. And it was the wildest thing, but it's like, yeah, I don't know what the security guards are doing, honestly, on the campus to even protect people. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm trying to remember, there was a similar story. I don't know if you or one of my friends that told me that uh, I think there was a, someone that, I don't know the teacher's name specific. He had like long hair and glasses. Mm -hmm. He was like a Chicano guy. But anyways. Oh, did he teach French by any chance or no? I don't okay. I have, I have a story about that French teacher, yeah. But well, anyways, uh, I think uh, one of the the kids threw a milk carton to like I guess one of the cholos that were walking by. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that story. Oh yeah, God. Yeah. Peter, please tell them that story. Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly. Well, you you how you got the gist of it. So basically, um. It was right after lunch. We go into the French teacher. I'll just call him Mr. V. I don't. Oh not, yeah, right. We're Sorry. not name dropping. Yeah, because. Um, but we're not name dropping, and so basically, the well, I'll call I'll call my friend. His name is D. And they, well, I'll just say I'll just say his name, but no one will know the full thing. His last name Dorian, basically. So he picks out the window, and I'm like, "Hey, bro, let's get in before you know class starts and stuff." And then Mr. V just sits down, like ignoring us. He's like, "Whatever these kids are gonna do." Dorian grabs a carton of milk and he sees the two gang members walking down there. I don't know what was like what got into him, but he threw the milk at them. And luckily he didn't hit them, but it landed close to their feet and it spilled all over the shoes and I saw it explode. And then, you know, we thought, okay, that's the end of it. I told him, hey, come inside before they see you. And so he shuts the, the window on the, I think it was the third floor. And basically we thought it was done. Five minutes passed. They found out the exact classroom they were in. And I tried to play it cool by like taking off my jacket really slowly. And then he's looking everywhere. And there was also, this is how like crazy it was, but 
I would just call her, I'll call her Nicole. So basically, Nicole is also, um, she's tied to the gang members. Her brother was like a top gang member at the time and you know, one of the gang's there. And basically she was in there and the guy knew her and he's like, hey Nicole, so who is it in here that threw the milk at me? And she just kind of like, she could have ratted someone out, but she's like, oh, I don't know, I, was, I wasn't I was here for it. But she clearly knew it was both, of, well not me, it was mainly Dorian, I watched it, but Dorian was in the back and he was crapping his pants. And then the worst part about this is the teacher, Mr. V, was just like, he he, he played it off like, I'm not looking, like he turned around, like if someone's gonna get beat, beat up, mm -hmm. he's gonna let it happen. And I thought, bro, like the game members like were scoping out, doing a circle around the room. And then eventually they're just like, all right, whoever did it, blah, 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 started cussing and then they left. But Dorian was like, bro, never do that again. And the teacher was just like, I'm, uh, he wanted, I guess, Dorian to get his, get a whooping. But I'll never forget that, bro. Like how, yeah, yeah. There's a history there, bro. But only if you saw it. He was crapping his pants the whole time when he threw it when he when he saw them come up like i felt like the ghost the spirit came out of his body bro i was like don't don't do that crap but you know what's crazy too um it was like a mixture of like they should have been sent to there was another center that's re really close to wilson if you remember i think it was not trade tech it's right at the bottom of wilson it was like a skill center mm -hmm. they should have been sent there versus leaving them in the, the high school knowing their affiliation but what do you what do you feel what would you change bro if if you could go back in time and move some pieces around or people around pieces well just uh maybe, maybe take like more advantage of like the ex the things that could help could you help invest yourself in your future to progress mm -hmm. you know what I mean? like more of like the college corner because people didn't really take advantage full advantage mm -hmm. you know what I mean? they're like oh you can take this maybe get an internship early on you know I felt like teachers were like, they ain't gonna make it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's what most of it, dude. dude I'm here for a check. Yeah, dude, pretty much. Dang. That's what I also felt too. Like, some, you got some teachers, like, like they honestly did care, yeah. but honestly, some mm. of them were like, eh, I'm just trying to get this paycheck, you know? There was very few that actually cared. And uh, the ones that did care got, I don't know if you remember the year, they got a pink slip in 2010. I, there was like some teachers that really did above and beyond even stayed after school to teach the students and then they get the pink slip on then the ones that were crappy still those are the ones that got tenured though pretty much and that was the worst part of the system i was just like dude and even now like you're saying the college corner um i agree with you bro like it wasn't put a priority to everybody maybe they didn't feel like most students would have made it yeah. but then i think as well you know the high school wilson was pretty liberal as well and so like maybe they're they're well then here's the thing too they're they're doing a lot of strikes at the time too yeah, and then we had the whole having to change into a charter school and not mm. a charter school. And we're like, what do you want? And then privatizing all that stuff. Yeah, it was it was a lot of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, I do know as well, man, switching topics is that I know you do also work on cars. What's your latest project on that? Uh, right now, it's just a, it's a really old Japanese shitbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, 88 Toyota Supra. Mm. Uh, that engine's gone through like three motors right now so far, and it's only been like two years. What did years. you put it through, bro? Huh? How much hell did you put it through? Ah, I would say a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> three motors is a good amount. Three, three, three lives. Yeah, three lives. Dang. But like the the motor is 30, 30 plus years old. Like mm. they're meant to be beat on, but like. To an extent, but because the cars, the car, that car that I have is uh, it's basically a Grand Tour, mm -hmm. but oh, you, nice. you, it was marketed as a, like a GT car, something fun and something you can take on road trips, something comfortable, has like cruise control and surprisingly still works. And uh, what else? Like the ABS, which is like a whole new thing in the '80s. Um, I'm taking it that you do enjoy kind of like racing with it or speeding with it. Yeah, I've actually. Basically, all the cars I've owned, like, they had some troubles, but they're mainly, like, fun cars, not, mm. like, your average Honda Civic or, like, a yeah, Nissan Altima. Yeah, commuter car, yeah. Commuter car, something can get you A to B, some might, I don't know why, but, like, there's a saying in, saying in Spanish, me gusta la, la mala vida, which translates <laughs> to, I like the bad life. Well, basically, all my cars, the first one I had, mm. basically, the transmission took a shit. That, that car had like over 180,000 miles. So it was, it was about what, was, what was the time span on that? That was... 
That one was Three weeks. A, no, no. Three weeks till I crashed it, and then it fixed it, and it lasted me another couple years, and then I, the transmission took a shit. So then I bought this one, mm. and that one, the motor took a shit. That one got rod knocked, which is basically Dang. where the crank is, and the pins is con where the connecting rod is. There's a bearing called a, a basically a bearing mm. that separates it. So what happened is there wasn't enough oil, Basically, the pistol is basically able to rattle all the way around. Dang. The piece okay. inside is yeah. pretty easy to get, it's like 12 bucks, but to take everything out. And, so I just bought it mentioned for Japan. That's dope. I would say for the people that are our introvert listeners, what tips would you add? Well, as an introvert, what tips would you offer them to get into cars? Into cars? Well, it's pretty easy. It's just um, what I recommend learn from my mistakes mm -hmm. is look for a car with a very huge community because there are some mm. like the like the Subaru yeah. and the Miata community very open there's a lot of them mine is kind of like I guess you can say like a cult following mm. like you would say like maybe like if you were compared to movies it'd be like uh, what's it called not fast clockwork no oh. like, cl like clockwork orange people that know them oh wow it's like that type of group we're like oh you like you got that and it's kind of like as the bastard child of like the Supras. Yeah. Because it, uh, the one after that, which is like the one I was like, is that a Supra? That's <laughs> Yeah. That's that's the Fast and the Furious that got kind of exploded and all that stuff, too. Okay. But uh, mine is the, the one that's like, meh. But yeah. it's just, since it's kind of like that boxy 80 look, yeah. that's what kind of drew to me. And I was say about the community, how did you know, how did you discover the community? For, for the Supra community, mm -hmm. what I, how I discovered is I bought the car. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought it with a broken door handle. Oh wow. And then I was like, I gotta go find it. So I was just like yeah. on offer up and like, um, what else? Yeah, basically on offer up and the, uh, two doors showed up and I was like, oh dude. That the door handles had some trim and then like door handles I needed and like a mirror. And I was like, all right, I can pick it up for 200 bones and probably sell the rest. Yeah. And just get what I need. Oh wow. And then um, I was like, oh dude, and, like you got it. He's like, all right, I got it. Got the piece. He's like, oh yeah, dude, like, we actually have super meets. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, we all come together, we all meet. And I was like, yeah, we all meet by Boss Burgers on Tuesdays every mm -hmm. other week or so. And they're like, all right, you're like, shoot me the thing. He's like, look up Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, SoCal Supras, and I'll tell you. So because of that, I met like a bunch of other people. That's dope. And because of that, funny story, not funny story, but pretty interesting is that mm. my Supra was actually stolen from me once. Because, oh, okay. oh. yeah. Yeah, go first, right? I remember that. When yeah. you mentioned it, I was like, dang. Anyways. Yeah, so basically, I went to a couple meets, and the car has a very distinct rear spoiler. Like, it's kind of rare, I guess. It's called a Kaminari wing, mm. or Kaminari whale tail. Yeah. So, I go to a couple meets, meet a couple friends, and maybe change like Instagrams, whatever. Yeah. Time goes by, I go to said community college, and then I come back to class, and for some reason, I don't know, it was just me. I, I was like, maybe I should go check my car. Come back, go to the fourth floor, check, yeah. and I don't see my car. I'm like, oh, maybe I parked on the third. And check, went to the fourth, I'm like, shit, where's my car? I tried getting the alarm, she was gone. I was like, damn, damn, I do it like I just come from class, my car's stolen, and I was like, this is some yeah. bullshit, dude. Like, from a school, I'm like, who? I was like, oh, shit. But anyways, yeah. so I come back, all right, and the cops take me around, make sure I don't. It was in any parking lot. Then um, that same day, I get a text from a fool. He's like, "Hey, dude, give me, give me a call." I'm like, "What the hell?" And so I call him up. Like, dude, I just saw your car. I was like, "What yeah. the hell?" Like, yeah, dude. I was following. I was like, "Oh, look, that's a cool Supra." And then he looked and he recognized my wing. And I was like, "Dude, it's like that's your car." And he called the police. He followed them around, but it was kind of sus because I guess they put into a like a black gate with a duplex. Put in the driveway, and I was like, "Shit!" I was like, "Dude, like, yeah, it was yours, but I couldn't stay there. They were kind of looking at me, kind of funny." And so, we he dipped and he told the police. Next day, I get a call saying, "Hey, we found your car. It's at this impound." I was like, "Dude, I'm pretty sure it's because he reported it." And they were like, "Oh, this is around this area." Yeah. They gave him the address, and then the next day, I got my car. I was fortunate enough that they didn't take anything, but. They were assholes and they left a huge ass mess. I used to work for a company that used time cards. Yeah. Mother motherfuckers used my time cards. 
to roll their fucking blunts, dude. I was like, really? <laughs> oh my god. They left their 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 fucking munchies and Machios. and they left their piece. Do they even like connected their flash drive? Left an iPod Nano. What? Little, little square ones, little old school ones. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, and a big ass little knife like this big. And yeah, dude, the car stunk of weed for like a good month. And like, damn it, dude. Luckily, they, they yeah. didn't really damage or anything. I guess they just took it for joyride, but still, yeah. dude. That was pretty sad. That That's crazy, the fact that it happened like that. And obviously, it wasn't really the community that did that. There's always a few bad apples that are going to take advantage of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. For people that are, like, shy and introverted, what would you recommend for them to warm up to communities like that? Does it? How, how was it for you and your experience to connect with other people? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. I guess there's a lot of things, I guess, because everyone is kind of extrovert mm. they're it's more engaging like it's friendly you know, they talk mm. to you like oh what have you done with your car it's like you know oh how, how long have you had the car yeah. for what else so like what were you planning to do you get me they get yeah you, you get you like, engaged and you're like yeah. oh maybe i want to do this like oh have you looked into this product mm. for this car have you looked into what uh this type of wheel or this type of tire have you tried this have you tried that so mm. they like give you options like oh don't try this like I bought it like a month and then it broke and then I was stranded or something, you know? That's crazy. You know? That's very dope, man. Mm -hmm. And um, right now you're in the super community, right? Mm -hmm. Did you decide to expand to any other communities that are out there? Uh, well, I owned a, a Subaru, so that was pretty fun until like, that also took a shit. The piston rings on that one blew, so that was fun. Yeah. It sounds like you have a really big love for cars. Do you see yourself kind of like doing your own thing as like a mechanic or maybe something to the side with that, like a side uh, business? of like automotive racing scene. That's probably mm. just like a side hobby because like I do enjoy that. Like I have taken my cars to autocross and like I mm. plan to do take them to the track. But the ultimate goal is just to like have maybe like two, three cars, mm. like a reasonable daily, right? quote unquote. And then um, like just bunch of cars that I just mess with that I can take out maybe like a phone wheel drive car yeah. rear wheel drive car an all wheel drive car and then like whatever I can do just to mess around is the you could correct the JDM scene still around or has that died down or no, it's still around it's 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 insane dude like some cars because of the drifting scene mm -hmm. just like the prices have gone up it's called the drift tax zone. Have you heard about oh, it? Oh, there's a drift tax? Yeah, dude. It's uh, like, Calif Cal only California, right? No, dude, that's just in general. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what that was. Okay, yeah, yeah you're dude, saying? Just in general, the drift tax is basically, um, yeah. they're, it basically, it's, um, because they're, there's so much usage for the car, the car has so much aftermarket, they're like, oh, my 200,000 mile car that's like been in like three wrecks is worth $5,000 and then, you're like dude like no it's not worth that much like just because it's used mainly in that type of scene you're like yeah ah. that's all it is it's just like oh my card value will now because everyone uses it it's yeah. popular wow okay and dude and it ups the price of a couple thousand and do you do your own like sales as well because now you go on offer up you can do buys and sales on yeah there. I, I i mainly buy it because i'm trying to I mean i mainly buy it just to keep the car alive mm. i have a whole bunch of spare parts like i said I have three engines I have a fender, I have a front bumper, two doors, a second set of wheels, and uh, a brake upgrade I want to do to it. So it adds up. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy, bro. And I, you know, I was going to ask you too, because uh, I know you're very involved in the East Los community as well. And this is more on like, what changes have you seen during like gentrification in this uh, area, I, man? Where I live, not so much, because I live like, like around east la like a member or whatever yeah but like more of lincoln heights and uh mm. montecito heights i've seen more and of, like more well, right? of, of the oh, more echo gentrification park. yeah echo park as well mainly of the aesthetics of the mm. like you get your mcmansions and then you have your like your i don't know what kind of fence it's basically the wood wood sideway fence mm. yeah instead of the white picket fence or like a or like a chain link fence, yeah. you see a lot of those, and then like a lot of like hipster like apartments <laughs> with like yeah. that are like have these crazy like windows and like, oh, just basically that. And then you see a lot of people like 
you know, like some areas are like really hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see like people just walking their dogs at like 11 p.m. and you're like, dog, what are you doing? <laughs> you're gonna do you gonna get stabbed. Know where you yeah. Live? I'm like, no, you don't do that, dog. Or like, or like where you're walking your dog, like not too long ago, uh, someone just like died dead in the street. You know? Yeah. Pretty much. They're like, um, I used to work in that neighborhood, and like, not two weeks, not not even not even yeah. two weeks after, like the place got robbed by by gunpoint, dude. I was like, dude, if I was there, I would have probably shit my pants. Yeah, <laughs> anybody would. Yeah. Like, the, he showed me the my coworker that showed actually showed me the video of what actually happened. That's I was like, crazy. dude, like he was really calm, yeah, composed, and I was like, dude, all for like maybe a hundred bucks that they probably came up and like the liquor yeah. stores don't carry much i'm like it's just it's, it's, i don't see what's worth it all you can do is carry a bag of skittles in the 40s bro there's yeah. they don't have much yeah. and uh i was gonna say too bro like you mentioned about uh you know like highland park and stuff like that and lincoln heights you're right a lot of gentrification is aesthetics but that's all it is it's just visual looks but mm -hmm. it's still like filthy there's obviously a homeless problem there and it's like oh, they don't do much about it no it's, it's getting worse and it's coming mm -hmm. closer it started off kind of small like yeah around the lincoln park area and then mm -hmm. you know towards like the borough like alhambra and el sereno it just accumulated like there was like one tent two tents three tents and over the course of the team the whole island of the border just filled up and filled up and also too i don't know if you've been where around where i live you know where the train tracks is King Torta. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. There was like basically, look, like, have you ever played the game Fallout? <laughs> yeah. You're thinking about the tents outside, or no? Yeah, there was tents there, but you know exactly. You know how they put like a mountain of dirt. Oh. <laughs> they started to be a little crowd calling you right there, dude. And yeah, they had their little racks, and they looked like you know how you just like raid refugees. Yeah, and then like maybe I'll find a sim pack or something. You know? <laughs> Looking for supplies. Yeah, dude. And then across the street from there, dude, like they're tending up too. Where they all it was pretty bad there too i don't know why because yeah, like a lot of people used to dump their like dead animals there oh wow yeah, that's dude. like your uh, pet cemetery huh yeah pretty much dude damn Light boxes yeah and that's the crazy thing is like there's homeless that are just lined up putting up their tents and like you're saying it's like it's already natural to them and we're not you know it's, that's the problem is we're not doing much but we just want to continue to build on the aesthetics and i wasn't about to say the old box you makes to go to an alhambra not too far from the Target that's nearby, it's for the people that know Alhambra and stuff, there was a homeless, a few of them in front of them. I'm like, i never seen that ever, a homeless person close to Alhambra. Now I'm seeing it, now they're kind of drifting closer to that area, and not much, the police aren't going to do anything. No. They just, I think they just told not, they don't care, it's not worth the time to put them. Well, yeah, everyone's basically like, you take the homeless now, you take the homeless now, you take the homeless now, because like, I think there are a lot of them were in like, Lincoln Heights and Montecito, but like, they kind of mm. pushed them over here where we are they just amounted and it doesn't help like the whole thing that's happening now mm -hmm. people losing their jobs and they're like well yep. there's already community here I, I can probably tend up here and like have this sense of like where i am you know stuff like that that's crazy mm -hmm. another thing that i wanted to talk to you about because i know you have experience as well what are your thoughts on the college system i know we're both from the cal state system oh it's pretty interesting like it's mm -hmm. like it's pretty good but at the same time like you hear some stuff like the mm -hmm. whole scandal with the, I think, I don't know if it was the president of Cal State LA. Yeah, was whole, it Covina or William or something like that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where the whole, like, he was, like, paying taxes, he was, like, doing all these parties and, like, oh, tuition wow. was going up and. That's crazy. And, like, and he was all over here, like, spending campus money or whatever, school money, and then like, we were just getting charged more. I think that's some other, some other stuff. But other than that, the school self treated me pretty well that yeah. it wasn't like very I would say like hostile environment it was very open like, well, from what I had from the time that we well when did you uh, take uh, I guess when did you leave the Cal State Cal State when I started when I left. when you left yeah or design not yeah when I left it was still pretty good it's just a uh, what year was it? it was like 2018 or 19 2018 actually 2017 and that's when it was before I was getting really political. I don't know if you remember. But oh, they were, they were, I don't know why. That's another thing that I liked, but I didn't like because the school was area liberal, like very liberal. Yeah. And like, I remember this one time, I think 
I'm pretty sure everyone knows the Ben Shapiro guy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know who he was at that time. I didn't know either. I remember going to class because I was late, and then I see all these people crowding me, and mm -hmm. they're telling me to say, I'm like, I gotta go. It's like, no, you gotta stand and fight with us. I was like, I'm gonna go to class. But everybody literally flooded, and he never did his uh Yeah, dude, they, yeah. They, and then what I didn't like is like, they didn't handle it maturely. Mm -hmm. They acted like children, in my eyes. Yeah. You know, because like, we're, we should be able to like, even though like, you know, like, different controversial ideas you should be able to talk fairly reasonable like, but instead the idea is like ah man you shouldn't be here you should be allowed blah, yeah blah. It's just like crazy and then it just made him look better because like oh look at these crazy liberals yep and you're like you're not helping the cause by acting like you know on the flip side he's benefiting like you're saying mm -hmm. and you know just for the the listeners that are currently listening is like we don't really have take a stand at anything with politically it's just what we're viewing right now like for I, I always believe too like there's some good ideas that come from the liberal side and conservative but there's a balance and when there's an extreme to either because both can be extreme mm -hmm. it could have it could happen where in in cal state la ben Shapiro was supposed to speak and then people basically just snuffed them or like they just didn't tolerate it and like he said i was saying it's like pretty much you should have open dialogue and conversation that's how you lead to a solution or at least a common ground but you know, you're right about that. And it's crazy because we did leave at a good time because I know it was increasingly getting more political. Mm -hmm. And I'm all for it, you know, fight for what you believe in. But there's also a point where you need to have some self-control and not force things because it's starting to feel like things are forced yeah, on people. Because it was more pressure. You know I mean, like, people, you should do this. I'm like, but I don't know anything about it. And they're exactly. like, you should do it anyways. I'm like, oh, like, I need to do my research. My due diligence and research what areas I believe in, whatever. But like, Everyone has their own beliefs, and like everyone should have, mm. you know. But you know, and that's but yeah, that was our experiences from like the college uh, time there. Even like, man, I just remember the good old days where you just focus on your career and the clubs you were in, and then maybe do some fundraisers. But now it's like completely changed into a political identity thing. I was just like, no, that's not that's not good. But yeah, man, um, I was gonna say, any tips for people that are trying to get into college? So that are very shy what do you think they should do maybe join some clubs or do anything like Probably that clubs because uh, myself i was pretty shy and i want to get into like the automotive mm. scene and they had a club that was like um i think it's called fce mm -hmm. and it was basically you would make this glorified go kart <laughs> yeah. it's basically an f1 style car and you would compete against other schools mm -hmm. and you would um, race and you would see who where they would actually have a build off presentation and like of, so. like how to sell it or like what you can do with it what, what people would you market to yeah and then like oh what like what performance to, can it qualify is it driver friendly yeah you know I mean you know it's interesting that you brought up that club um because there are actually several clubs on campus and they say we're going to mention cal state la but because it wasn't promoted enough people didn't know about it and we could compete honestly with the top universities that are out there it's just that i feel personally like the school didn't do enough to promote those things that too the school itself and then also the students themselves because like it was student based so like the students have to promote and a lot of people mm. don't know how to sell themselves or sell the club they're trying to get mm. into and you fall into this rhythm of losing members and then you also have like all no, what my club went through was um, yeah. a lot of the alum, a lot of the people that were in the club that were veterans or like yeah. old old club members were graduating, and then they would just have just new bodies. And yeah. the new bodies wouldn't have anything, and they wouldn't leave a legacy for them to learn mm. and to reach. They're like, have a you guys, I'm gonna go do my thing. Well, they were yeah, kind of, and yeah, no, but it was just miscommunication. Not miscommunication. It was just lack of information given to the previous oh i see what you mean. they didn't have bad intentions it's just yeah. they didn't think far enough to, mm -hmm. to they were like that. oh let's get this car done now and then we'll worry about it later but like you gotta start think they gotta start thinking of like how we're we gonna help the next team keep going mm -hmm. you know so you gotta keep that momentum going i really like how you mentioned the legacy part what do you feel personally is like a legacy that you would like to leave behind for yourself the legacy would pretty much like pretty well respected and like uh, said automotive racing application but like oh maybe he's like like maybe that's like like a well-known drifter or like track car or something or maybe be working for a tuning company or something mm. where you can be like oh if you get your tune car by this guy you're like you gotta sit sit thing you don't have to worry about any gremlins or problems or stuff like that 
Do you see yourself doing your own little small business in that area? Not business per se, because like I like making money out of race cars is one of the worst endeavors you could probably do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's not a uh, what's, what's, what's the word uh, financially responsible, we should say. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it's, it's honestly not. If you're trying to make money off that, uh, good luck to you. I, I hope you do the best. <laughs> oh, I really do. <laughs> you, like Peter says, but uh, no, it's 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 very hard and very competitive, especially because mm. like you have these companies that have been here for like many years, and like, mm. if you're trying to start up, you can do it. I'm not I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't or yeah. try. But I'm just saying you just know yourself getting into because it is very competitive, and uh, making money off that is not really for the faint of heart mm. you need a, a lot of commitment a lot that's crazy and i was gonna ask you uh for the final question is what's your next move what are you planning to do next for yourself oh uh, right now just basically get back back to school because like i've mm. been pretty lagging on that and i need i already i was i just wanted like a functional car because like all right i got this going I could yeah. keep going i got i could work i could go pay my school now yeah. Yeah, because I don't really Spanish way anymore. So I was like, all right, now that I can make money, now that I have a vehicle, more yeah. transportation, I can get that rolling again and then uh, see how it goes because of the mm. whole new schedule change of like yeah, the whole COVID thing of being able to have online classes. Changed everything. Yeah. You know, I even, I, you know, something that came to my mind and I remember talking to uh, friend about is like tuition should be lower because it's online it's no longer actually at the a lot of people are putting uh i think their sister told me that they're they're gonna try signing a petition to oh, have wow. tuition Reduce. lessened because they no longer have the resources of uh the healthcare system of like the mm. therapy because cal state la used to have that where Great you therapy. had the uh, like the chiropractors and you have your little mm. medical clinic that would give you like advil or like or like some or the career things. center too that the will prepare center. you to mock interviews that's mm -hmm. crazy career center and then you have your your um, labs you know to mm -hmm. computer labs to do that and the softwares that they offer there at that the school that was the best yeah you have like SolidWorks Microsoft PowerPoint mm -hmm. Photoshop and for like any round of majors and you don't have that anymore so I'm pretty sure they should they should probably listen it it should just be tuition for the teachers that are teaching online. Yeah, That's to it. get them because, like, like I said, like you said, also too, they don't have the, what's the word? I'm already resources. Yeah, the resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No worries. But I hear you on that. Um, that's cool that you want to go back into school again. Um, what helped you get the motivation to go back in? Because I know you decided to take a break for a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I was just, I guess you can take what just going through, or I guess a rough patch you can mm -hmm. take, and. Uh, Right. It was just a lot of things compiling of my not developing my, as you say, your my time management and mm. just things stacking on top of each other mm -hmm. and it's just, yeah, you can only take so much because of uh, stress, I guess you can say, and then yeah. that's it. I definitely could uh, relate to you, man, because I did have a moment where I got kicked out of Cal State LA. Oh. And I got two, what do you call it? Is there warnings? I'm trying to think of probation. So yeah. I got two warnings for probation and I ignored it. Even my manager at the time when I was working at Cal State LA was like, hey, you should really look into it. But I was young, time management. I was focused more on the money and having fun. And I forgot about the career. Got kicked out, went to ELAC. And I was just like, it was a downgrade. And I was like, I was like, I need to step up. And then I was working at a assembly line. So I was like, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? Making like 10 an hour and doing the same thing every day. So we all have to go through some point, like you said, a rough patch, whatever it looks like to people, and then just kind of get back in there. But what do you feel like you have learned to manage your time better? Like, what have you done differently? Basically, try to set up your own schedule. Like, even if it's small, like, well, for me, it's like, you wake up at a certain time throughout the week, no mm. matter what it is, you know what I mean? Like, waking up at 8 a.m. versus, like, waking at, like, 12 or, like, 1, and then losing your whole day like little productive things you know like maybe work out with a run mm. yeah, I mean just keep your mind going or like set yourself mini goals where you can do like one of my goals is like okay I'm gonna do this for this car yeah I'm gonna fix this I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna save it for this and you keep on going the thing the hardest mm -hmm. is just to start you just gonna keep them mm. like, gotcha that's I really like what you said is the the best part is to start and that's probably the best advice for the introverts that are listening is just to 
start bottom line when you go out and like say like say earlier what you said was talking about with the communities just start talking to people and asking questions yourself even going to the part of college because i know a lot of us tend to do things last minute start on whatever you need to do study or the assignments get ahead of the curve and you'll be better at time management but i definitely want to say thank you so much isai for just being on here and sharing a lot of great stories because i know you have a lot of interesting things that still need to be uh, uncovered i'm sure there's a lot of stuff that you can talk about but thank you so much for being on the show and if anybody wants a shout out go ahead and let us know on the comment section or even facebook or social media and i'm also if isai would like to be followed i'll also put that on the description on the comment section uh, but thank you so much, Isai, and thank you everyone for listening.